Cause I long to see your face Open my eyes, I pray This empty soul is thirsty for your touch Change my heart, change my heart, change my heart Well, good morning. Welcome to our worship service this morning. We're so glad that you're here. You know, the first worship service of the year always is very special to me because it's like a reset. Like we have a chance to send 2020 into the past and we have a chance to look forward 
into 2021. And so I thought what a, a good way to start our, uh, our year off would be to focusing on the security that we have in Jesus Christ, our anchor, our foundation. And so I just have a couple of scriptures I want to read to you as we set the tone for this, our time of singing this morning from 1 Timothy. It says, the saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. For to this end we toil and strive because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially of those who believe. And from Romans chapter 5, it says, You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You stand and worship with us as we sing in Christ alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm for the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all. Of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness. Torn by the ones he came to save Till on that cross as Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on him was laid Here in the death of Christ I live of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for I am his and he is mine with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath. Commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand.
Jesus Christ, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned. I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me. Because you died and rose again I'm forgiven Because you were forsaken I'm accepted You were condemned I'm alive and well Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well Spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know. to honor you in all I do. I honor you. You are my King. You are my King. Jesus, you love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you. Amazing love, my King would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you in all Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in the heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, 
to the glory of God the Father. The light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so high. Glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created. All for love's sake became poor. So here I am to worship. Here I am. say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross so here I am to worship here I am to bow down here I am to say much it truly cost for you to send your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. We're so thankful, we're so thankful that we can claim you as our own, that we can call you our savior and our friend. And we worship you this morning in the, in the truths of scripture. And we just want to ask Lord that you would open our minds, open our hearts to hear the word of God preached to us today. I want to pray a blessing on our brother, John Payne, who is visiting from the Forest Lakes District. Just give him your words and fill him with your Holy Spirit as he preaches this morning. We ask this in your name. Amen. Please be seated. And John, come on up, John. Well, good morning. 
great to be with you here this morning, and thank you to the worship team. That was a blessing this morning, and I love seeing students up here helping out. I was a youth pastor for 15 years, so uh, you never can kind of take the youth pastor out of someone who's in ministry, and I just love the opportunity to be here with you today. I was, I think the last time I was here, my wife and I were here um, when Pastor Paul and his wife were celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary and had gone uh, away, and so he'd asked if I could come again, and it's a joy for me to be here with you today. And uh, if you have your Bibles, if you open them to Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, and uh, thinking about how to shine in the new year. And what that looks like to have our lights shine. If you remember, maybe as a child hearing the song, This Little Light of Mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, all, let shine, shine till Jesus comes, let it shine. And that's kind of the thought this morning that uh, we are looking at in uh, Philippians chapter 2. Now, I'm, I'm not sure, Gregory, if we have another slide that's the next slide. It talks, oh, no, that's okay. We'll just go back to where we were. Perfect. I didn't know if we had a, a slide about the district. I want to th say thank you publicly um, to Wisconsin Rapids Evangelical Free Church for being uh, supportive of the district. We, uh, When I started in 2016, in November of 2016, we had 99 churches. We're up to 141 churches. Uh, in just a few years, and uh, this past week, we interviewed uh, four, I believe, four church planters in the Milwaukee area, and we see God just doing some amazing things in terms of new churches that are being established, new churches that are um, multi-sites and other things that God's doing, and I am so thankful for this church family for Wisconsin Rapids Evangelical Free Church. And I've had the privilege of being here and meeting with your leaders. I've had the privilege of, I think this is my third time preaching. This is the first place that I, I preached when I became district superintendent. I had thrown my back out and I came here on crutches. <laughs> I'll never, I will never, you'll forever be linked to me in crutches. I don't, don't know if I'll ever forget, but uh, the Lord has really uh, just healed my back from back then with uh, physical therapy. And I praise the Lord I've been, uh, symptom and pain free now for almost five going on five years since uh, that happened in November of 2016 but what a joy to be here with you when you think about a star and about shining um, now some of you might think of what's out in the solar system other of you might think the word star is somebody who has their name on Hollywood Boulevard and <laughs> what is the star someone with fame wealth influence power but from God's point of view, what is a star from, from, from God's point of view? Um, who are the stars from God's perspective? Who are the heavenly celebrities who shine like stars? Hebrews tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And chapter 11 of Hebrews gives us people like the person of Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Moses, Rahab. And before each one of them, in Hebrews chapter 11, it says, by faith, so-and-so, by faith, so-and-so, by faith. And so faith, really, when, when, when God talks about someone who's shining, it's one who has been faithful, one who has been obedient, and one who has uh, accepted God's call upon their life and said, I uh, am going to follow you wherever you would want me to go. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 and 16, Jesus said this. He said, You are the light of the world. Therefore, let your shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Now, the word star that was used in the first century, we just uh, celebrated Christmas. And I, I don't know about you, that did you, did you hear? Was it the 21st or the 22nd of December they were supposed to be the star? I don't know about you, but in, in Wausau in the area, probably it was the same way here in the Rapids. It was cloudy. <laughs> and it didn't get a chance to see the so-called Bethlehem star. But the word star in the first century was for a, a, a navigational beacon. The stars would be used to lead ships safely uh, around the world and into harbors. And Christ's followers are to be bright stars in a dark world. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to the Father who's in heaven. We're put here on earth to shine the light and guide others safely to the Heavenly Father. 
Paul told the Philippians that they were stars in this world. How do you identify a star quality Christ follower? What would it look like to be a, uh, a light like Paul is asking in Philippians 2, 12 to 18? Well, the first, there's four things I want you to take a look at with me this morning from this text in Philippians 2 that are aspects of us being uh, shining lights. And 2021 gives us an opportunity, doesn't it? How many of you are glad to see 2021 here? <laughs> How many, maybe I should rephrase it. How many of you are glad to see 2020 close? Yeah, that had a little more response from that. Uh, but it's a new year. I don't know about you, but when, when I come to a new year, one of the things I like to do is kind of just step back, r- reflect on the past year, and think about what has transpired. Pray and ask God what lessons I need to learn from this past year. One of the things that I use to kind of evaluate is uh, Galatians, uh, the fruit of the Spirit, and going through and reading through those characteristics that as a result of me abiding in Christ and walking in the spirit, those things are supposed to be manifest fruit in my life. And so I say, you know, John, are you a more patient person this year than you were this past year? Uh, Were you, were you gentle? Were you, were you kind? Was self-control part of what God was doing in your life? Were you loving? Were you a person of peace? Was your life characterized by joy? And so at the end of a year, it's always good to go back and look. And then also it's, it's wise too at the end of a year or the beginning of a new year is after you look back and reflect then to, to look forward and say, God, what is it by your grace that you want me to do today? What is it by your grace that you want me to um, strive for in this next year is as I walk with you? What are the things that you want to develop in my life? What are the things that you want to teach me? What are, who are the people that you want me to um, share your love with? Well, the first thing that we see there, as I said, four aspects that it takes to be a Christ follower who has influence, who has a light that shines. The first thing we need to recognize is that it's God's work. It's God's work. In verses 12 through 13, Paul says this, he says, Uh, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now not always in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and do for his good pleasure. Now, looking at these verses, you might say, John, what does Paul mean by saying work out your own salvation? I want to clarify by saying what he does not mean. Paul is not saying, work for your salvation. Because that would contradict what he wrote in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. It says, it is by grace that you are saved, through faith, and not by yourselves, and not by works. Because if it was by works, then you would boast. We'd go around and say, look, I saved myself. And isn't it? Amazing that any time you take the cross of Jesus Christ, the plus, the cross, and then you try and add something to what Jesus did on the cross, baptism, (laughs) good works, church membership, uh, being good. Any time you try and put a plus sign after the cross, what you really do is you subtract from the work of Christ. I mean, think about it. If you and I could be saved by our own merit and by our own works, then why did Jesus need to go to the cross and die for our sin? And ultimately what we do when we, when we substitute other things and we add a plus sign after the cross and say, Jesus plus this, plus this, plus this for salvation, is what we do is we subtract from the work of Christ. And we basically say to God the Father, and I know people don't, wouldn't want to be this bold or brash about it. But what we really are saying is, God, your son didn't get the work done. And it's up to me to be baptized, to be part of a church, to do this, to do this, to do this, plus, 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 plus. And ultimately, friends, when Paul says work out your salvation, he's not saying work for your salvation. What he's saying is that salvation starts in verse 13 It is God who is working in you. 
Salvation is always a start of, of God's work. His, he first works in us to save us, and then we're to work out what God has done in us. Workers would enter into this, this term, work out, came from describing a mining term of mining silver. Miners would, would enter the mine and bring out the silver that was already there in the earth. In the same way, we're to work out the implications of our salvation in every area of our lives. Salvation always starts with God. Salvation starts when we receive the, the grace, but it never ends there. True salvation affects every part of our lives. To work out our salvation radically changes the way we view our, our, our world, our circumstances. Everything is affected by the fact that God is working out our salvation through us. God's work of salvation changing us from the inside out. That's why he says in verse 13, It is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. God gives both the will and the ability to obey what he commands. First, he changes our want to, <laughs> then he provides the power for us to be able to obey. God intends us to give us what we need in every situation so that we can do his will and that we can shine like stars for those that can see our good works and glorify the Father. One more final observation about God's work. Often we look at what we lack and conclude that our problems are greater than our potential. What God requires of us is obedience. And then he supplies. I remember back when Abram uh, in the land of Ur was told by God to leave. He wasn't even told where to go. He just said, leave. And Abram and Sarai, his wife, left. They were obedient. I, I, I listened to a, a podcast about a week before Christmas, and I was listening to a man who had just completed 50 years of pastoring a one single church and he was 88 years of age and he was uh, finishing his ministry and he was being interviewed and he was asked what he had learned or what things that uh, stood out most important over his lifetime and he said the thing that had most impacted him was that if he would just simply obey what God asked him to do God would take care of the rest that God required obedience and if he would obey God would take care of the rest. Friends, may I suggest to you that in 2021, if you'll seek to obey God in his word, he'll take care of the rest. If you obey him, he will take care of the rest. And so as we work out our salvation, it begins with God's work. What does God require? Of us, he requires obedience and then he supplies. The truth is, it comes from the very heart of the gospel itself. When God demanded full payment for sin, we, we, we sang about that this morning, about those beautiful songs, about the, the fact that Jesus went to the cross and paid our debt. He took upon our sin. All of those things. When God demanded full payment for sin, what did he do? He supplied his son to pay for the sin. So what God asks of us he will supply. And we go right to the very heart of the gospel, the good news that Jesus Christ came to this earth, that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. What God asked for, uh, for us to be forgiven, he then supplied in the person of his son, Jesus. What God asked Abram to do to Abraham, to, when he became, changed his name from Abram to Abraham, when he had his son Isaac, God asked him to go offer his son Isaac on an altar as a living sacrifice. And then God provided a ram in the thicket, in the, right there, God, what God asked Abraham to do, obedience, God then provided and supplied what he'd asked him to do. And friends, in 2021, let me just say to you, if you will seek to be obedient to God and to his word, if that will be your priority in 2021, to obey God and his word in the power of the Holy Spirit, God will take care of the rest. If we seek to be obedient, well, that, plot, that does not only apply to forgiveness, but it also uh, goes on to work from our salvation. He gives us the inner strength to obey His will, and then He provides the strength, the faith, the power, and the enablement to obey. So to, to, to shine like a star, to, to have influence, to let your light shine, means that it begins with God's work. But there is 
an aspect that Paul goes on to say that involves us, and that's my words. The second thing is my words. <laughs> Look at verse 14. Do, and then what is that next word? Can you all help me out with that word? Do all things. <laughs> all means all, and that's all all means, right? Do all things without grumbling or disputing. Now, that's great, right, Paul? But Paul, you didn't live through 2020. <laughs> you lived through his era that God had him in his time to serve. And this word in the original language, grumbling, conveys the idea of muttering under your breath. I remember as a boy, my dad said, take the garbage out. And I was mumbling, mumbling under my breath. <laughs> and he said, do all things without grumbling or complaining. So I took the garbage out and was still complaining as I did it, you know. Sometimes I forget that complaining is an attack on the very sovereignty of God. What do you mean by that, John? Well, every time I grumble about my circumstances, I'm saying, if I were God, I would have done things differently. When we as humans are thankful and grateful, it is difficult to complain and to argue. <laughs> what we look at, what we focus on, determines what we see. What we look at, what we focus on, determines what we see. If we focus on our circumstances rather than on God's blessing and His work, we can become discouraged and we can grumble and dispute. If we focus on our problems, they will fill our minds until we see nothing else and our words will keep us from shining. But when we focus on the Lord and His goodness, we see our problems in the light of eternity. God doesn't work things on our timetable, friends. What is it that God is trying to accomplish in your life and in my life? To shine like a star, we need to recognize that it all begins with God's work. He's the one who works in us and then works through us. And that our words, as they come out of us, if they're filled with thankfulness and gratitude and not grumbling and disputing, my, how you will shine. Now, you all know, and I'm not going to ask you to look anywhere or point any fingers here, but we all know people who are um, glass half full people, right? Right? who um, are just very negative, negative Nellies. We, we all know those folks. And what it is, this, maybe in your workplace or in your, even in your own family, there are those people who are negative. And they say, well, I'm just a realist. <laughs> or I, I'm just rooted, I'm, I'm rooted in reality. And yet, I think that when we grumble and when we complain, we rob God of a blessing that he wants to have us to, to be to others. Now, I'm not saying be insincere. I'm not saying be flatterous in terms of saying what isn't true. But I am saying there are opportunities always to give thanks and to let your light shine by what you say rather than by grumbling or complaining. We all know what it's like to be about those who grumble and complain. And God had a whole generation of people for 40 years who went around circles in the Old Testament after they were delivered from Egypt and they did nothing but grumble and complain. God gave them, I mean, all they had to do is open their tents and go outside and there was food, manna, heavenly bread. Then they got tired and they wanted to go on a keto diet. They got tired of carbs and they said, we, we, where, where is the meat? <laughs> and then God brought brought along meat for them to eat. And then they weren't happy about that. And so they spent 40 years going around in circles complaining. And that complaining was complaining against God and His provision. And a whole generation of people died off because of the fact that they didn't have faith that God was providing for them. And they did nothing but murmur and murmur and complain. And so friends, your words, the words that you speak, the attitudes that you portray, the way in which you live your life is a light that can, as, as Christ shines through you. And you're so different and you're so uh, 
optimistic about what God is doing. You, you recognize, you've, you've read the un, end of the book and you may realize that this life can be difficult and hard and yet you recognize in the end, God wins. And you recognize that God is working all things after the counsel of His own will and He's got a plan that He's following. So it, it starts with God's work. It, it involves my words <laughs> to be uh, shining as a star in 2021, but it also involves, thirdly, my witness, my witness. Paul says in verses 15 and 16, that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom, and here's where we get this, you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life so that in the day of Christ, I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Friends, seek to be different in 2021 in order to make a difference. Seek to be different in order to make a difference. There are all sorts of people who want to make points. <laughs> make a difference in 2021. Recognize that God wants to work, work, work through you as He's working your salvation, as you're working that out and understanding all that it entails. And then as your, your speech and the things that you say align with what scripture says and that our, our, our words of thankfulness and encouragement and things that are profitable that you speak about. I will be different to make a difference. And then our witness. Paul uses three words to describe what shining like a light looks like. He says, first of all, blameless. That word blameless means above reproach. In other words, no serious accusation can stick. It's like the new pans that might daughter gave to my wife. They're no stick pans. So I love doing those dishes. You know, after making eggs with that one, no stick, you just whoosh, and, whoosh, and, there, and it does it. And that's the way it is to be blameless. Accusations cannot stick because your life is lived in such a way. Like Joseph in the Old Testament, who was accused of, of doing something to his boss's wife that he did not do. And he went to prison for 13 years of his life. And yet he was a man who was, who was blameless. Another word that that implies here in the text is not just blamelessness above reproach, but innocent or pure. And I think of being innocent and pure as being authentic. What you see is what you get. In a world where there is so much computer generated graphics and things that we see on TV, you look at that and you say, man, did that really happen? Or you know, something comes across the internet and it's this orca coming out of the San Francisco Bay, grabbing onto a helicopter. And you're like, does that really happening? That video there? And it's computer generated. Be authentic. The world is looking for authenticity, for what's real. And friends, God's word is real. The gospel is real. Living a life that is blameless, above reproach, innocent and pure, authentic. What you see is what you get. And then finally, without blemish or faultless. And that's fit to be offered to God like a lamb without spot or blemish. To be without blemish or faultless. We will make an impact in this world by lives that are visibly, observably, measurably, noticeably, and obviously different from those around us. We are to be different to make a difference. Our values set us apart in this culture. We're to be different to make a difference. Why is it so important that we be straight arrows? <laughs> well, because we live in a crooked and twisted generation. The word crooked comes from the same word which we get the word scoliosis, which is a curvature of the spine. The word twisted has a much stronger implication and means crooked by choice. So there's those who are messed up. <laughs> scoliosis, we're all messed up by a sense that we're born as sinners. And yet there are those who are crooked by choice and who live that way. And as we have a witness, we become a bright light in a dark world. How do you show someone that they are a crooked stick or that they are one who is being um, crooked or being uh, twisted? By laying a straight stick next to the crooked stick. As shining lights for Christ, we simply and quietly resolve to live out our faith in the most beautiful way possible by shining the light of Jesus in our homes for our neighbors to see the light of Jesus Christ. 
The, the change we seek must start with us. As we see our lives change, we can see the lives of those that we know and love as we pray for them. I would encourage you in 2021 to make a list of five people and pray every day that are in your circle of influence and say, God, if you give me an opportunity, I will speak up for you. I'm amazed, friends. I, I began praying that prayer a number of years ago for people that God has placed in my circle of influence. And I'm amazed that as I pray that and have that awareness, and I say, God, if you'll open the door, by your grace, I'll have the courage that comes from you to take a risk and say something. And I'm amazed, friends, as I pray that and as I, as I look for those opportunities, God gives those opportunities. A gentleman that I have known for about 10 years, we referee high school basketball together, and um, we were talking the other day about um, really the way that we live our lives right now will influence by God's grace, what our lives look like someday. Um, Joe Stoll, who used to be the president of Moody Bible Institute and is now the president of Cornerstone University in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I heard him say this, uh, he said, the quality of my life someday when they come and pull the shawl over my legs, the, the, the comforter and put it on and I'm sitting in a chair, the quality of my life of how I will be living my life at that time is directly reflective on how I'm living my life today. If I'm a grateful person, if I'm a thankful person, if I'm a person filled with joy, the fruit of the spirit that I mentioned, if I'm living that way today, when the filter's gone someday, <laughs> isn't it amazing how children have no filter? And then as we get older, that filter burns off again as we get older and we say things they are like, where did that come from? Well, the filter's being burnt away. He said there's a direct correlation between the way that we're conducting our lives today and the way we're... And so as I was looking to my friend as we were talking on our way traveling to referee a high school basketball game, I'd been praying, Lord, give me an opportunity to talk to him about that. And we we're just having this conversation about how the way that we're living our lives now will influence what we're doing. And there was a moment of just silence. He's a type A personality and a CEO of a, of a medical practice that's thriving. And he just looked at me and he goes, you know, John, there need to be some changes in my life because I don't like the guy that's going to be sitting in the chair someday if it's reflective of how I'm living my life today. Friends, as we pray and ask God for opportunities to have a witness, to just speak, and so that I was able to lean into that a little and, and talk just a little bit about that. And friends, as, as we, by God's grace, op as he opens doors, we can ask him to say, Lord, I will be willing to walk through that. So we will shine like stars when we hold fast the word of life. People will see the way they live. They will notice the difference. The light of Christ will be seen in us. And when people in darkness around us ask us for the reason of the shining light that we have, we can share the word of life. That's Jesus with them. To shine in 2021, we as Christ followers must live for others and not for ourselves. What a distinction that is. Someone who isn't the me first uh, and putting the needs of others ahead of our own needs. To shine as a star, we as Christ followers must live for others. Question, if you were to put on trial by your co-workers or the people around you, your neighbors, your acquaintances, for being a follower of Jesus Christ, would there be enough evidence to convict you? by the people who know you best. And I didn't say perfection because friends, no one's perfect. Jesus was the only human that was perfect, that took on the human flesh. He was God and man, the perfect God man. But friends, are you living in such a way that there's a lack of duplicity in your life? That there's authenticity, that you're striving to be like Jesus? recognizing that it's his work, that our words matter, and that as we are a witness, people will hear and see. Paul says in verse 16, so that in the day of Christ, I may be proud of you that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Paul was looking forward to boasting about the Philippine, Philippines, about the Philippians when Christ returned. 
He was envious the day when he would stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and give an account for his obedience, for his words, for his witness. He planned to boast about the Philippians and what they'd done in his own generation. He was thinking about probably that Philippian jailer when he and Silas were beat, beaten and put in a prison and they were singing at the top of their lungs at night, singing praise to God and an earthquake happened and the Philippian jailer thought everybody had, a, he was going to be toast because he was the, the, the one on char, charged with the prisoners and they were after the prison doors fell off with the, with the earthquake, Paul and Silas said, don't hurt yourself. We're still here. And it said in Acts chapter 16, that salvation came to the house of the Philippian jailer that day. I would suggest to you that the singing by Paul and Silas, the joy amidst trials of being in jail, the hope that they gave to this man who was ready to take his life because he thought the prisoners had escaped, that salvation came to his house that day and he and his entire family believed in Jesus because of the way that they conducted their lives, their witness. And he said that Philippian jailer was part of the group of the Philippian church that he said, one day I hope to boast about you that my labor was not in vain. Friends, what will we boast about when we stand before the Lord Jesus Christ someday? Do we honestly think that anything that we could have done will impress the very Lord Jesus Christ? The one who was part of speaking the universe into existence? What are you going to say to him that, will be of impression, that would impress him? Friends, might I suggest that faith and obedience are what please the Lord. Faith and obedience. To shine like a star, my friend, on that day, the only thing that will matter when we stand before the Lord is the impact or witness we had on others as shining lights for the cause of Jesus Christ. Let your light shine. Everything else will fade away. To shine like a light in 2021, we need God's work in us. We need words that come out of us that are pleasing and, and are grateful and point to Him. And we need a witness to the reality. A witness to the reality, friends, that Christ is real. A reality that's just not a story that we read out of a book, but this is the living Word of God and that, that Jesus Christ is alive and He's still impacting and changing and influencing lives today. He's still changing us. And people are looking for that reality today. And as we recognize God working in us and our, our, our speech is different and our witness is such that there's a reality that Jesus is real, people will see our light and they'll glorify the Father in heaven. Finally, and I'm, everybody loves to hear a pastor say finally. In conclusion, a fourth way that we can shine is by doing God's will. God's will. Verses 17 and 18, Paul concludes by saying, Even if I'm being poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I'm glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, he was from Missouri. My dad was born in Missouri. I mean, when he says you all, right? And rejoice with you all. Likewise, you also should be glad and rejoice with me. Paul mentions this aspect, this idea of being poured out like a drink offering. In the Old Testament, they would pour wine on top of an animal sacrifice that the heat of the fire immediately vaporizes the wine, turning it into a beautiful fragrance. Paul says, even if I end up losing my own life for you, it won't matter as long as you live for Jesus Christ. What a statement. We come to the bottom line of Christian service. I wonder how many of us can truly say that it doesn't matter whether we live or die so long as the people we know come to know and follow Jesus Christ. Paul had said earlier in the book of Romans that if he were able to be cast out so that his people could come to know Jesus, he'd be willing to have that happen. God's, God's grace, dear friends, is free, but it's never cheap. God's grace is free but it came at a very high cost, the blood of his son, Jesus. Reaching the world has never been easy and Jesus knew that it wouldn't be. That's why he said in John 16, you will have suffering in this world. This has always been the case for God's children. 
First they killed the prophets, then they killed the apostles, apostles one by one, all except John who did die on the Isle of Patmos in, ex in, in exile. Centuries ago, Tertullian the, declared that the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. In Hebrews chapter 11, verses 35 to 38, it lists believers who suffered for their faith. It says, others were tortured and refused to be released. Some faced jeers and flogging, while still others were chained and put in prison. They were sodden too. They were put to death by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. And then this wonderful phrase, the world was not worthy of them. The world was not worthy of them, is what God says. Of those who suffered for the name of Jesus Christ. The world was not worthy of them. And then we come to Hebrews 12, 1. <laughs> excuse me, let me, um, verse 39. It says, these were all committed for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us so that only together with us could they be made perfect. God's will is that you come to know Him in relationship through faith in His Son, Jesus Christ, His work, His death, His burial, and His resurrection. God's will is that you then be transformed into the likeness of His Son, Jesus Christ. He saves you to make you like Him, so that when people see us, they see the light of Jesus Christ. Friends, you are the light of the world. You shine like stars in this world as you recognize God's work in you. As your speech and your, your life is lived in a different way, your witness is that. And you recognize that God's will, that God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for you in 2021. The world has its stars, but God has his. I love Hebrews 12, 1, which begins, therefore, and as you know, whenever you see a therefore in Scripture, you want to know what it's there for. In light of Hebrews chapter 11, all of those great saints that had walked the faith, the writer of Hebrews says this, Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, those that had lived their lives, those who had been flogged, jeered, those who had been chained, put in prison, sawed in two, that had died by the sword, those that were destitute, prosecuted, and mistreated, those who the world was not worthy of them, they were commended for their faith, and they are now standing in this great cloud of witnesses in Hebrews chapter 12. When I become discouraged sometimes, and all of us, anybody for honesty in church? <laughs> Good place to be honest, right? We all become discouraged. There are times when we listen to the other voices other than the voice that we need to listen to from, from God and His Word and from His Spirit who wants to speak to us. And when those times of discouragement come, friends, I love to think about Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. That we're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. That they're there. Those ones from Hebrews chapter 11 who ran the race. Who the world was not worthy of them. And they're standing there. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. And let us run with perseverance the race that's marked out for us. God has a race that he's marked out for you in 2021. And there's a whole group of witnesses that are there who have run their race. This cloud of witnesses. And we're to fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer, the perfecter of our faith. For the joy that was set before him endured the cross scorning his shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Friends, in 2021, 20, we have an opportunity to recognize God's work in our lives. Every day we should be thankful to wake up and say, God, thank you for saving me. If that's the only thing that the Lord does for you today is make you aware of his salvation, you could be thankful for generations and generations and for eternity. The fact that you've come to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior is so much more than what any of us deserve to be thankful for. It's by His grace. So be thankful for His work. Have words that will be different in 2021. 
Have a witness because your words and your life will be different. And then recognize God has a will that he's, his will that he wants to perfect in your life and in my life, that he's working in our lives to make us like his son, Jesus Christ. And that there's a great cloud of witnesses as we keep our eyes on Jesus in 2021. There's that cloud of witnesses that are there cheering us on, wanting us to finish the race that God has called us to. Father, thank you this morning for the privilege of being with these dear people. Lord, thank you for the privilege of being a follower of your son, Jesus Christ. God, how I ask, this is a new year that by your grace you're allowing us to look upon. God, may we be people who are working out our salvation, not working for our salvation, but God, growing in our, in our understanding of all that you've done for us. And then God, may as a result of your changing our lives, may our words be different. Um, uh, may we be people who are thankful and grateful. And God, because of that, may we have a, a witness. Um, may, may we have a light to shine, the light of Jesus that shines, that people might see and glorify the Father. And then God, as your will is being worked out in us, your perfect will, God, may we recognize that 2021 is filled with those opportunities to be shaped and conformed to the image of your Son, Jesus. We pray that all this will bring honor and glory to your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we ask all this. Amen. Thank you, John, for bringing that encouraging word to us this morning. And I always love it when I can tell a preacher is preaching to himself. So thank you for sharing your heart this morning. Now, when I drove in this morning, you could see the beautiful fog clinging to the trees. Did everybody see that this morning? Just what a, a beautiful artistic picture of, of God's created glory. And, and when you look at that and you, and you think of Jesus Christ and what he has done, what is your response to that? What is your response? And our closing song this morning is actually, What Can I Do? What can I do but thank you? I have one more to add to that that isn't in the song. It's when I think of this cloud of witnesses. What can I do but thank you, Lord? So let's stand and we'll close our service with, What Can I Do? See the beauty of a sunset's glory, amazing artistry across the evening sky. When I feel the mystery of a distant galaxy, it awes and humbles me to be loved by a God so high. What can I do but thank you? What can I do but give my life to you? Hallelujah, hallelujah. What can I do but praise you every day? Make everything I do a hallelujah, a hallelujah. Of a God of mercy who shared humanity and suffered by our side. Of the cross they nailed you to that could not hold you. Now you're making all things new by the power of your risen life. What can I do? But thank you, what can I do but give my life to you? Hallelujah, hallelujah, what can I do but praise you every day, make everything I do a hallelujah.
What can I do but thank you? What can I do but give my life to you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What can I do but praise you every day? Make everything I do a hallelujah. just a couple of announcements and Grant if you want to make your way up um, I just have one quick announcement while he's coming up um, we uh, elders covet your prayers as we continue the search for a new permanent senior pastor we did have an opportunity to meet with one candidate this week and so we are uh, reviewing our interview with him and just reflecting on um, on all of that, um, we're not 100% sure what to do, so we covet God's wisdom and ask that you would pray for us as we uh, consider this candidate. Um, and if you have any questions about that process, feel free to contact me or Randy or Bob. Now, speaking of Bob, um, him and his family have um, been dealing with COVID in their house, so if you would keep um, them in your prayers as well. Uh, Grant. As you see up here, January 13th, Midweek Ministries going to begin. We are looking at a study, and I think it's really beneficial for all of us. If you notice, I say us. The life of a Jesus follower. But in small print, stop living for Jesus. Did you hear that? Stop living for Jesus. So Jesus can live through you. This is so important. If we turn around and look at ourselves, and truly do what we would have done today when we had communion. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28 says this, Let a man examine himself. Where's our relationship with God? Do we truly love God? Is he first in our lives? You may say, I love my children, I love my wife, I love my car, I love my house. But you need to make God first. What was brought across in this message this morning, if you were listening closely, closely, if you have a flashlight, the only way that light can come out of that flashlight is if the batteries are in the flashlight, and that's the power. What's inside of you? What's living inside of you? Again, 1 Corinthians 11, 28. I'm not examining you. You need to look in the mirror and examine yourself. Where am I with God? The other way to look at this is in Galatians 5, 16. Many know me and know that's one of my favorite verses. But I say, walk in the Spirit 
So you don't do the desires of what? What you want. And that's allowing God to work through you. We all need to do this. And this study is an eight-week study. And this study is not just a flip and come in, sit down, read a couple verses, blow it off, and call it a good one. No. What it does is each week we'll watch 15 minutes of video and then what do we do? We discuss it for the next 45 minutes. If you notice 15 minutes of video, the rest of the time is to discuss it amongst who? Us. It's not about somebody leading the study, it's talking about all of us sharing. And, and what's going on in your life. The next part of this is each day, each day, there'll be scriptures to be read, very short, specific scriptures. And then it says, answer the following question. Boy, here we go. You think you've really got a lot to do here. What does the Bible say to you? What does the Bible say to you? And the only way you're going to decipher that is back to Galatians 5.16. This study, what I've looked at it so far, and I went through the regular book, I started working on this myself. And I'll tell you what. There will be 15 minutes of video, 45 minutes of discussion, but if you get involved in this study, you're going to spend during the week, because there's five days that you've got to do scriptures, but in those five days, you're going to find out where your relationship is with God. I believe it's really important for all of us Matter of fact, to show you how much I think this is going to be worthwhile, we're going to have this on Wednesday night. We have a Thursday study that comes in the morning. I'm going to offer that in that for the simple reason some cannot drive at night because of the darkness. So we'll come in the light. We'll come in the light and we'll study God's word together and grow in our walk with Jesus Christ. But right now I'd like to do something that we normally don't do in this church. But I think it's time we do that. Emery, John Middleton, would you please stand up? These are two brothers of mine. Brothers in Christ. This is E Free Church. I'd like you to meet them. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you, and thank you for coming to church today. Yes. I really appreciate this. You've been a blessing to me beyond comprehension. Thank you. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to pressure anybody right now. I want you to this week to go back and pray on this and really think about it if you want to get involved in this study. Again, pray about it, because how does God speak to us? Through by prayer and supplication with what? Thanksgiving. He will answer your prayer. Charles Stanley's favorite words, trust God, leave all the consequences to him. He's in control. I thank you for your time. Sorry I took 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm a long-winded old man. Thank you. Have a great day. And the Lord bless you. Well, on the positive side, it was only 10 minutes, Grant, so that's good. <laughs> that's good. Let's, um, let's close our time together with a word of prayer. Why don't we stand up and pray together here? I think I'll even stand up and pray. Father God, we thank you for this hour of worship that we've I just had and we 
we pray and we trust that you've been pleased with our hearts and our attitudes as we have lifted up praise and thanksgiving and, and, and prayers of need to you this morning. We want to thank you for uh, John Payne and his word. We pray that you would encourage him, Lord, in his ministry and the work of the Forest Lakes District. We also want to pray for Pastor Kim and Pastor Paul while they're on vacation today, and also for Bob and his entire family dealing with COVID. Just heal them and, and bring them back to us very soon. Dismiss us now with your blessing, uh, helping us to remember that we are to be the lights in this dark world, and we're to shine brightly for you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are dismissed.